For the last three years, I haven't run my photo business at all. I have a full team in place from a CEO who runs the operations of the business day to day and makes long-term decisions, hiring and firing an admin that runs the daily operations and talks with clients, and then a team of photographers that does all of the photo shoots we get. And the reason I tell you that is because on this video, I wanna share with you five mistakes that I see people make when it comes to growing their photo business. And honestly, these are just based upon a lot of fears that I hear about from people that we help in our forward coaching program navigate this process. And so I wanna share those with you so you can hopefully make less mistakes because scaling your photo business is awesome, right? You get a bunch of time back. You can increase the amount of money you make. You can build an asset that maybe one day you could potentially sell. If you haven't seen the video in my feed with Jack, he sold his business after only owning it for a few years for over 300 grand. So I think you can build it bigger and sell it for more than that, but that's an option but all of these are only options if you scale your business. If you continue to run it yourself, well, you're not gonna make more money at least past the limit of maybe 10 or 15 or 20K a month, depending on where you're at. You're definitely not gonna get more time back because the more you scale, at least when it's just you, the less time you have. And then third, you're not gonna be able to sell it because a business that relies on you 100% is, is worth very, very little. And so here are the five mistakes that people make. So here's something that I commonly hear, a scenario that I commonly hear that may or may not resonate with you. And after that scenario, I'm gonna jump into the five things. The scenario is this, you make 15K a month as a real estate photographer, maybe you make 20K a month. Sometimes people make more, but I want you to picture yourself there. You're making 20K a month. And if this is already you, awesome. <laughs> this video is definitely made for you. And you want to grow your business further. So you want to make more money. The problem right now is that you literally just don't have enough time in the day. So not only are you not where you wanna be financially, maybe you thought this point would create more financial freedom than it did, maybe, whatever, right? You're not where you wanna be, you have a bigger goal than where you're at, but you have zero time. And you'd actually like to enjoy yourself a little bit more and have some time back. Maybe you're working you know, 10 hours a day, which at the start, you're grateful for and you're excited about because you're making more money than you've ever made before, theoretically, and you're doing it in your own business, but now it's starting to become a lot. You like to take your foot off the gas a little bit. That's where most people are that I talk to about this because you know that you need to hire to get to the next level, but you don't know how to do that without messing up your business. And the fear that you have is, hey, I'm gonna hire someone, my clients aren't gonna like them, they're gonna go somewhere else. Or I'm gonna hire someone and the quality is gonna be less and the clients are gonna go somebody where else. And ultimately all your fears just end up with the clients going somewhere else and you actually ruining your business by trying to do the opposite, which is grow it. And that is absolutely something that I've seen happen. So in this scenario, what the person does is they're fully maxed out. They're doing 20K a month, maybe even more. And they know that they finally need to hire somebody. They've been doing it too long. They can't take it anymore. Maybe the money's great at this point, but they absolutely need to hire. And because they have no time, they rush the process. And what I mean by that is they heard about this one guy that did photography, or they knew this person growing up, or they have this friend and they're like, you're the perfect fit. And they bring them in the business and you know, they don't really know how to structure pay. And so they kind of do that wrong. Maybe they promise them some you know, profit share in the business that's too big of an amount that doesn't make sense. That person can grow into their role and be excited, right? They make all these, these things. Um, they share all these things with this person to try to hype them up. And then that person gets in the business and you know, the person's very motivated maybe, but they, they're kind of lazy when it comes down to execution or they're not really friendly with the clients or they have a bunch of ideas that don't really make sense. And that person you thought was going to become an asset to your business, maybe help take some of the shooting load off of you and eventually maybe run your business with you, maybe be a partner. A lot of people make that mistake, isn't who you thought they were and they're not performing well. And then you're like, ah, where am I? That's not what I want you to do. And so here are the five mistakes that will help you prevent this um, in no specific order. They're all things that are important to know. Number one is you cannot rush the hiring process. You need to go through a proper process to hire somebody. So the process we teach is we start with a large number of candidates. We do a group interview. We narrow them down a little bit. We're looking for specific things. And then we pick one candidate. And I know I went over that kind of fast and just glossed over the top, but the most important thing here when it comes to hiring is not rushing. And what rushing is, is settling for the first person you get. What doing it properly is, and of course there's little tricks and stuff, but the main thing that's important to keep in mind is if you start with a big number of candidates and you whittle them down slowly to a small number of candidates, then you've at least given yourself a huge leg up and you're more likely to get a candidate that actually fits in your business. So mistake number one is rushing the hiring process. Number two is not properly training. I know this sounds kind of silly, but what a lot of photographers do is either they way over train in a way that's not helpful. So they have that person shadow them for ages, weeks, if not months, following them around and kind of just being more of an assistant than someone they're actually training. And so what I would recommend is sure you can have them shadow you for a couple days. So maybe like 10 shoots at most, but then starting at shoot 11, they need to be doing the shooting with you critiquing them. The vast majority of people are going to learn much better hands-on than you just telling them. And so quickly pivoting to that area is good. 
making sure that you know they actually are getting hands-on time because a lot of times frustration happens when you're like man this person isn't learning fast and you think you've made the wrong move and you're like well they can't do anything to help me and i'm just paying them this money and they're just sitting there and it's like yeah they're sitting there because you're just letting them sit there you need to get them doing the stuff as soon as humanly possible so you can get them trained in producing value I almost reverse scaled my business. I had hired two people and I was really excited about growing and then I didn't know how to be a manager and I didn't train properly. And so I was like, man, I'm just paying these people to not do anything. And I, at one point I was doing a shoot and they were back at the office and I was like, what am I? And I, I even called my dad and was like, I'm thinking about scaling down the business and just doing it myself and saving up money, right? And thankfully my dad was smart enough to be like, I think you just need to learn how to manage and properly use the people that you've hired, right? And so that's very important. Train them properly, utilize the people that you've hired properly. Number three is knowing whether you have the right person or not a few weeks in to them working for you. So at this point, you know, you've hired them by taking a large number of people and moving it down to a small number of people, and then you've trained them properly. Number three is making a decision about whether they're a good fit quickly. One of the things we always tell people coming into my business is that we have a 30 day trial period. Tell them we're super excited for them to work for us, you know, they were great in all the interviews. We think they'll be a great fit, but we want to give them a chance to analyze the job for 30 days and see if they enjoy it. And we want to be able to do the same. And so 30 days into working with us, we'll let you know. We'll have a conversation about whether we want to continue with you. This gives you an easier out if you don't think they're a good fit. And it's not a shocking to them. And I think it's just a respectful thing to do for them. It also gives you, like I said, an easier out. So you're not doing the biggest mistake of all, which is keeping somebody that's not a fit at your company long term. That's really easy to do. I've done it way too many times in my business and it's a lesson I had to learn over and over early on. And so that's why I made it into a full tip of its own, which is you need to make sure that they're the right fit. And if they're not, move them on as soon as possible. How do you know if they're right fit? Well, if they're already complaining about driving, which is one big part of the job, you know. If they're making a ton of mistakes, even after you've helped them you know, know that those are mistakes and know how to prevent them. If they aren't very good with clients, if you're getting clients that are really a lot of times asking for you after you send your photographer, if you get a lot of people that are not happy with the photos, more than likely it's because they don't like the photographer and that's a problem, right? Your clients need to love that photographer. A good sign and something to look out for is people actually requesting that photographer again in the future after they work with you. If you're not getting agents tell you how awesome your new hire was, they're probably not a great fit for your business. And you were able to grow your business by people really liking you and that's all scaling is. It's you getting people in your business who the agents will also really like. And that's why if you know a few weeks in they're not a good fit and they're not getting that praise from clients and they're just not on the trajectory you want them to be, then go ahead and move them on as quickly as possible. The fourth mistake I see people make is not managing properly. So you've gone through the stages, you hired somebody, right? You train them, they're doing well, they're performing. And if you don't continue to do your job as a manager, what you'll see is either flatline, they're not gonna get better at their job, which people with more experience should get better, or more commonly, you see them start to slip a little bit. They start to be later to shoots, right? They miss things more frequently. They're not as nice to agents. They get into the routine of their job and they kind of relax. Relaxing is fine, but relaxing your standards is not. And so that's where you come in. It is not a set and forget thing. Scaling your business is not you hiring someone to do a job and never talking to them again. In fact, that's one of the big mistakes a lot of people make is they're like, awesome, I got this person hired, now they're gonna go work for me. It's like, well, yes, but also you now have a new job. You know, if you outsource 40 hours a week of work, this is a rule of thumb I have, expect to spend four hours managing that person right? It's a 10 to one exchange. They're going to do 40 hours for you, but you're going to have to do four hours. That comes with coaching them and continuing to help them improve, doing one-on-one -on -one meetings and doing stuff that makes sure that their standard is high, reviewing their photos occasionally, checking in with clients to see how they're doing with that photographer and generally making a point to make sure that that person is continuing to improve, continuing to have their standards, you know, at least maintained, if not raised. And if you don't do this, like most business owners do, you'll become frustrated. You'll think scaling is the problem. And then you'll either fire that person, try to find another one and just repeat this cycle every few months when the standards relax, or you're gonna go back, like I said, and just do it yourself because it's easier. I promise you it's not easier. When you scale well, it's the easiest thing you can possibly do. The bigger your business gets, the easier it is to run. Tip number five is focusing on building company culture. This is kind of similar to managing well, and they go hand in hand, but it is a little bit different. So when it's just you, you know, you're motivated by the wins of your business. You're motivated to make more money. You're motivated to fulfill whatever your dreams are, right? Well, when you have people working for you, they have those same dreams. They just might be different than yours, but they have dreams, right? And when you have someone working for you, 
they still have dreams, right? They might be different than yours because you wanna be a business owner and they potentially wanna work for you at least for now. And the way you build company culture, in my opinion, is by helping people make whatever their dream is come true at least as much as possible within that role. Remember, you're not doing them a favor by giving them a job. There are plenty of jobs they can get in plenty of places to work. It's actually the opposite. Consider them it's a favor to you that they work for you. And it's your responsibility, at least if you want to keep them long term, which is beneficial for you to create as good of an experience as possible. So don't just treat them as machines that do work for you. Make sure you understand who they are and what their goals are. And make sure you have a team that's excited to come to work every day. And you don't do that by being a bad manager. You don't do that by not caring about them. You do that by making a point to do exactly the opposite. So get to know your people on your team. Create opportunity for them to enjoy their work. Create opportunity for them to have fun, period. It's really easy to do little things that boost company culture, right? And the, the low-hanging fruit that everybody does or says they do, but a lot of people don't actually do, is like do company dinners once in a while. Recognize people for the work they've done in the company or the successes they've had. If they've had a personal achievement, celebrate that within the company. Like they're going to spend a lot of their waking day working. So you might as well create a good experience for them because then they're not going to be as likely to go at leave for the first opportunity they see somewhere else. Remember when you build a company, it's not just about you. And in fact, even if you wanted it to be just about you and you're very selfish, the best way to do that is to create a strong company because that will help you build your financial dreams as well. More on the quote unquote selfish side. And I know I just hit you with a bunch of negative mistakes mistakes and things that probably scare you and even the thought of scaling your business probably scares you. So I do want to take a moment to say that I think one of the best things that you can do for your business is work to scale it. It'll make your business smoother. It'll make your life more peaceful because you're gonna have more people to help you with those problems. You know, a lot of people say that scaling is really hard and there are elements of it that are hard, but I don't think it's actually harder than running a solo business. I think it's easier because yeah, you have new challenges and different challenges, but number one, it's less boring because you're always doing new stuff. But number two is you have people to help you with those challenges. I cannot imagine going back to a day in my business now at Normandy Young or any business that I'll ever own in the future without working to build a team because not only is it more fun for me, I make more money, I create more opportunity for others. It's also literally easier. So don't let these new challenges in front of you scare you into staying where you're at or making excuses like I did and basically telling yourself, hey, you know what I'll do for now? I'll just save up a bunch of money and then I'll do something else later. I don't want to scale. I just want to, you know, it's easy. I have, I have it down now. I just want to you know, save up a bunch of money and, and we'll see what happens in the future. That's not a good approach. Not only are you very unlikely to save money, but you're just resisting new stuff. It's not that the challenges are necessarily harder. I think they're easier actually. It's just new and different to you. So I encourage you to push past them, get to that next step in your business, continue to grow, create more income for yourself, have a better schedule if you want one, create opportunities for others, scaling is just awesome. And if you wanna help with this and you want us to help you through all these bottlenecks and help you open up your business and expand it, we'd love to work with you. There's a link below where you can talk with my team. And what we wanna do is just learn a little bit more about your business to make sure that we see some easy bottlenecks to fix so that we can actually be of help to you. So you'll find that link below. Hope to see you inside.